This is a tutorial of medical embryology presented by the SA Charles A.B. with reference Langman Medical Embryology by T.W. Sattler. Hello, in this tutorial we are going to see the central nervous system embryology. <coughs> so now, we have already seen that in the third week of the trimester, this is going to be the, the formation of the trilaminar disc. So this is occurring by the fourth week. Here you are going to have your neural plate. The neural plate are going to have two neural growths. With you are going to have your, your neural growth in the center and two neural folds. So this is a neural growth. Here you are going to have some somites, but here we are done. We are not putting it there in in bold because it does not what you are going to be involved with. You are going to be involved with the neural plate here. So you are going to have the neural fold. Here we are going to have the um, neural plate, the somite, here the primitive strip with the primitive node. <coughs> now, we see that upon enclosure of the neural growth, the neural folds are going to, f uh, to, to fuse with each other. So, at this last portion, you are going to have the neural crest. The neural crest are going to move laterally as such in order for the formation of the ganglions. So we have the sympathetic ganglion, we have the sensual, we have the, the ganglion of the priority uh, the, the priority ganglion. We also have the enteric ganglia involved with the gastrointestinal tract and the development of suprarenal gland. All of them of the medulla of the suprarenal gland, all of them are coming from the neural crest cells. So you have the neural crest upon the when it fuses the neural crest does not remain here but goes laterally and enters into the visceral mesoderm for its different pathways <coughs> so now let's involve the central nervous system embryology <coughs> so now at this portion upper portion you're going to have the neural fold here you're going to have the somites closing this pores so the upper portion you're going to have the neural fold so the neural fold are going to enclose up here when they enclose up here you're going to have posteriorly at the back you're going to have the somat so they are going to enclose up here and posteriorly you're going to have the somat <coughs> so you have this which is enclosing now you see that it is enclosing much more onto the upper portion so as it encloses you're going to have the pericardial board and you're going to have certain other somites here so at this portion you're going to have the cranial neuropore and at this other inferior portion you're going to have the caudal neuropore and the disease which is going to occur when you have um, you don't have the closure of this cranial and the caudal neuropore is going to be the neural tube defect so now at this other portion here you see that this is your neural tube the neural tube at this upper portion are going to form the hind brain the mid brain and the forebrain so now let's see the sagittal section <laughs> now you see that the forebrain before the development of the forebrain you see that there are going to be spe certain specific location on the neural tube which are going to be marking the um, the initial form of the different portion of the brain here on the forebrain we have the telencephalon here you are going to have the diencephalon here you are going to have the mesencephalon here is the rhomboencephalic isthmus the rhomboencephalic isthmus is going to separate the mes is going to be a small isthmus separating the mesencephalon and the rhombocephalon the rhombocephalon now consists of the metencephalon and the myencephalon now we need to know that the telencephalon is going to differentiate to form the different cerebral hemispheres with the different lobes the parietal the occipital the frontal lobes are all in with the temporal lobe are all involved in the are, are all the derivative from the telencephalon after that you're going to have the diencephalon the diencephalon is going to put the different thalamuses so we have the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the epithalamus, and the subthalamus all are going to be formed by the diencephalon and with all are going to be derivative of diencephalon. We have the mesencephalon is going to produce the midbrain and we have the rhomboencephalon. The rhomboencephalon is going to divide into two parts, the metencephalon and the myencephalon. The metencephalon is going to produce the pons and the cerebellum while the myencephalon is going to produce only the medulla.
and we realize again that all of them are going to have cavities inside the cavities upon their growth they are going to form the lateral ventricles the cavities are going to form the lateral ventricles the cavity that's going to be at the level of the diencephalon is going to be the third ventricle and lastly the cavity which is going to be posterior to the rhombocephalon um, addition of the metencephalon and the myencephalon will be the fourth ventricle yeah so now this is a section this is a section through the neural tube so now when you have the neural tube here and you have a section through the neural tube from inferior from um from um deep to superficial you have this so this is going to be the lumen of the neural tube so this is much more deeper and this is going to be superficial part of the neural tube <coughs> The superficial part of the neural tube so we realize that at this upper portion here we have the external limiting membrane or the basement membrane the basement membrane is going to be the superficial part of the of the uh, is going to be the superficial part of the neural tube and the lumen is the innermost part of the neural tube we see that all the cells involved at the level of the neural tube when you have um the histologic section all the cells are going to be the, the neuroepithelial cells all these cells are going to be called the neuroepithelial cells when they are involved with the histologic section see when when um the the neural tube is still young so all of them are going to divide these are the dividing neuroepithelial cells are the intermitotic neuroepithelial cells all of the neuroepithelial cells <clears throat> now the more the, say this is section of neural tube is slightly more advanced stage so now when the there is growth of the embryo you see that the section is going to be slightly changing at this level this is the um, the level of the cortex and this is the level of the lumen the inner portion this is the outer portion level of the cortex so you have the external limiting membrane these are the differentiating neuroblasts you see that at this level the neuroepithelial cells are no more going to be just neuroepithelial cells at the upper part here which are the more superficial part is you are going to have the neuroblast cells and the inner part the more we are entering into the inner part you are going to have the neuroepithelial cells so here you are also going to have your pia cells these are the pia cells here so all of these cells now the pia cells here are the cells which are involved in the pia matter in the formation of the meninges so you need to know that this is the superficial portion so at the level of the meninges we have the um we have the first one the the dura matter we have the arachnoid matter we have the pia matter the pia cells are the pia matter are the cells in the pia matter which are in direct contact with the cortex of the brain this portion is the cortex of the telencephalon so now here upper portion here we have the neuroblast and the more we are going in theory you are producing you are having serial neuroepithelial cells and the neuroepithelial cells have completing the faculty of dividing this is why you can see their mitotic um, processes here <clears throat> so now let's see a section through um, what what the development of the spinal cord will be in future time so now initially in the embryo you see that it will exist the embryo um, has the neural tube you see that this is much more a neural tube this is how the neural tube will exist in embryo this is how it will be so this is completely a tube <coughs> here at this lateral portion you are going to have um, the neuroepithelial cells at this lateral portion you first have the neuroepithelial cells internally all of them have the, the different neural folds are fused to form this tube here <coughs> now this um, tube here is going to have at the internal position the neuroepithelial layer we said that close to the lumen we are going to have the neuroepithelial cells and outside away from the new lumen you are going to have the neuroblast cells mostly so now these are the neuroepithelial cells and outside you mostly have the neuroblast cells but now the point to note here is that this new um, this neural tube of the spinal cord at this position here you're going to have the mantle layer at this position you have the mantle layer so no this at, at this position you have the ala plate and here you have the basal plate so these are the two main position so seeing from um, the upper portion the upper portion you first have the roof then you have the ala plate you have the basal plate and then you have the floor from top 
to bottom you can classify the 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 the, <clears throat> the neural the neural tube as being having as having a roof the alar plate the basal plate and the floor so these are the this is the classification neural tube from top to bottom roof alar plate basal plate and then floor now classification from um from um from deep to past to superficial you have the new epithelial layer you have the mountain layer and we have the marginal layer these are the three class these are the two main classification then the classification from top to bottom we have um, um we have roof we have alar plate we have um we have basal plate and we have a um, floor and our classification from internal to external we have new epithelial layer mantle layer and marginal layer now you need to see that the, at the level of mantle layer there exists the alar plate and the basal plate the alar plate is going to be located much more to the roof and the basal plate is going to be located much more to the floor so now you see that this basal plate alar plate here are going to form are going to be what the cells which are going to form the sensory dorsal roots so they are going to be involved with sensation and these other cells here are going to be involved with um, visceral motor so now this this is why all these cells here are going to be a sensation now the, this other level is the marginal layer and the marginal layer is what is going to form the um, white matter while the mantle layer is what is going to form the gray matter of the spinal cord so here, here you are going to have your intermediate horn where you have the ventral motor and here you have the the central canal so all these are going to be posterior you have this posterior one and you have this anterior ones here so this is how the cells are going to go you you have different neuroblasts the neuroblasts first grow with as um, an apolar neuroblast and then grow as into bipolar neuroblasts then grow into a multipolar neuroblast now the dorsal root ganglion you need to know that the neural crest cells are the one which are going to form mostly the sensory um, cells mostly the sensory cells involved in the spinal cord and these are going to come from the dorsal root ganglion as they come from the dorsal root ganglion they expand into this position enter into the alar plate for the sensation at this one here and now the cells which are involved at this other portion are the neuroblast cells they are going to form the multipolar neurons which are going to extend at this position here to form the trunk of the spinal nerve so this is the ventral horn the dorsal horn and all that <clears throat> so now this diagram is going to show the differentiation of the new epithelial cell the new epithelial cell is a main cell is a main cell involved with um is a main neuronal cell so now you also have other derivative like ependymal cells and mesenchymal cells but the new epithelial cells are the main cells involved mostly with the neuronal tissues the epithelial cells are the cells which are involved in the production of the cerebrospinal fluid and they are located at the level of the um, choroid plexus and the epithelial cells can be thought from coming from the mesenchyme because they have the, the capacity of uh, from there they are the cells involved in, um, involving in the in the ectoderm so because they, they, they are certain specialized epithelial tissues and have a, a capacity to produce fluid just as like in the pericardium and like in the parietal cell layer so parietal cell layer of the um, the pleura so all this the, like in the pleural cavity and even the abdominal cavities you see that they are capable of producing fluid <clears throat> So all this shows that um, the ependymal cells are much more epithelial in origin. So new epithelial cells are the ones which are going to form neuronal tissue. This one are going to much more similar to epithelial cells and you have mesenchymal cells. The new epithelial cells are going to form the bipolar neuroblast. They are also going to form the glioblast. The bipolar neuroblast are going to form the multipolar neuroblast. The neuroepithelial cells, the glioblasts, are going to form the protoplasmic um, astrocyte, and they are also going to form the fibrillar astrocyte. And also, the glioblasts are going to form the oligodendrocyte. <coughs> this protoplasmic astrocyte and the fibrillar astrocyte dif differ in their location in the um, central nervous system, but all of them are used 
in um, in order to supply nutrients to the different neurons to these multipolar neurons here and also they are going to um, involve in the uh, recycling of neurotransmitters so when neurotransmitter come at the level of one syllabus they remove the neurotransmitter recycle it and resend back to a neuron for the transmission of that same neurotransmitter to the synapse so we have the oligodendrocyte that are used in the um, in the production of myelin sheet in the central nervous system production of myelin sheets outside the central nervous system occur by the strand cells so the mesenchyma cells are the microglia this one are used as phagocytosis so these are the macrophages of the central nervous system microglia <coughs> so here you are going to have the ventral the, the ventral motor root thread here you are going to have the oligodendrocytes which are the ones which are involved with um, myelin sheet production in the central nervous system because we are inside the spinal cord and here we are outside the spinal cord here is going to be schwann cell one schwann cell is going to myelinate only one um, neuron why oligodendrocyte can myelinate um, many neurons even to till um, 100 and even going to thousands <coughs> So this is not of Ranvier. When they are going, the transfers are going to produce not of Ranvier, the myelin sheet and neurolemma sheet. <clears throat> now, a point to note is that realize that initially the spinal cord has the length of the body. The total the spinal cord of the, the has the length of the body, but as you, the, the, when you, when you grow, you see that the neuronal cells are no more growing. So what happens is that as the bones are going to elongate downward, you see that this is moving upward, and this is why the S, the 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 the, the position where the S fibers are coming out, are not the exact position where corresponding to the spinal cord, because of the growth of the body not proportional to the growth of the spinal cord. So this is the film terminally here, which is the end portion of the. Um, this is the end portion of general matter, and here is the coda equina at this position here. <clears throat> so this is going to be um, this is going to be the joint illustrating molecular regulation of neuron differentiation. Initially, it's going to start with BMP, BMP4, and BMT7 excreted by the ectoderm, overlying the neural tube here. Establish a signaling um, center in the roof plate. So this is going to establish a signaling center in this plate, layer, the roof plate here. Then the BMP4 in the um, roof plate upgrade the cascade of TGF beta. So it's going to upgrade the cascade of TGF beta, include the BMP5 and 7, activin and those. And these are all the TGF um, beta molecules. So all of them are going to be involved and all of this is going to be the form, involved in the formation of neural differentiation of the spinal cord. <clears throat> now these are neural tube defects. Though we are not involved in pathology, you just see the main neural tube defect. The spinal bifidal occult are no asymptomatic. It's the most, uh, it's the less severe condition where you see there is no, there is no major symptoms. But realize that there is no production of the posterior arc of the the spine of the of the vertebral of the of the of, the, of this particular vertebrae, and also at this at this posterior position, it is characterized by having hairs, spinal bifida or cauda. You see that the skin where there is no position of production of the spine and the posterior arc of the vertebrae we are going to have heads at that location also the second form of the spinal bifida is going to be this uh, meningocele you see that the dual matter is going to enlarge in that part but you are not you are not going to have the sp the spinal cord enlarge and having fluid now I also have meningomyelocells that that enlargement is going to contain the um, the the spinal cord we have the neural tissue we have rachisis Rachisis is a condition where the neural tube is not even enclosing. Here, the neural tube is fusing with the um, epidermis and it is not even enclosing. So, there is a fusion with the skin and there is no enclosure. And lastly, in, in this is rachisis, and this is another form of rachisis where um, you have the neural tube which is not also enclosed as such. <coughs> 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 
So now the cerebral hemisphere formed from the telencephalon. We have the diencephalon having all the thalamic the, 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 the thalamosis. We have the mesencephalon from the midbrain, and here we have the metencephalon here separated from the mesencephalon by the rhomboencephalic isthmus. So from here you have the different origins of the nerve. The, uh, the cranial nerve five is coming from the pons, then the, the nerve, the all these other nerves here <coughs> are coming from the junction between the pons and medulla. So we have cranial nerve seven and cranial nerve um, eight are coming from junction between the pons and the medulla. And lastly, we have this other nerve, cranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, the vagus nerve, and the crane, we have the cranial associate with the hypoglossal nerve. All of them are coming from the medulla. <coughs> so now, we have the mesencephalon here. We have the metencephalon. We have the trochlear nucleus. So we have the rhombic limb. When we remove here, we have the attachment of the roof of plate. We have the ala plate here. We have the metencephalon. Now, seeing this other portion, you have here the let's say the neural tube at the location of the myencephalon. The my <coughs> this is a the neural tube at the location of the myencephalon. So at start the myencephalon was as such, but later on is going to become as such. So the myencephalon is going to produce a medulla. So at the beginning, it's going to have a neural tube which is going to resemble this. So now we said that we can separate the neural tube into two portions. We have from superficial, from um, from um, internal to external, and from um, up to bottom. So at up here we are going to have the roof plate, and here at bottom we are going to have the floor plate. Now between the the at the level of the roof plate and um, at the level of the internal portion. <coughs> this portion which is internal is going to be the um the mantle portion so at the internal portion here you are going to have the ala plate here and here you are going to have the basal plate here the ala and the basal plate are going to be separated by the so-called limitants and now this this um this this portion here which is the basal plate are going to form all the visceral motor and the somatic motor portions so we see that the somatic motion motor will be most anterior here the, the special visceral motor will be at this location here and we have the general visceral which is at this location closer to the so-called limitants this is similar to this other one here we have the visceral afferent here we have the special visceral afferent and we have the somatic afferent here so these are for the sensory and this are for the motor with this portion is much more general this is special um, um special um, visceral special visceral and this one is um, somatic um, motor and somatic sensory <coughs> so these are for different nerves so you can have for the, the all the nerves are coming which are arising from um, the medulla are going to have an impact there and those nerves are cranial nerve 9, cranial nerve 10, and cranial nerve 12, and cranial nerve um, 11. So here we are going to have the attachment of the roof plate. This is the attachment of the roof plate. We have ala plate, basal plate, rhombic lip. So now this is going to be um, the original, this is going to be the end portion of the inside the metencephalon at the level of the pons. So here you are going to have your sulcus limitans at this position. Here is going to be the general visceral, visceral sensory. Here is going to be the somatic and the special visceral sensory. This here is going to be somatic sensory. Similarly to what we have seen above here. But here you instead have the foot ventricle. And also here you have the foot ventricle having the choroid plexus. You see that the foot ventricle is going to lie between the pons and the medulla. So here you are going to have the roof plate, the external granular um, layer. Now, what is going to characterize the pons is that anteriorly you are going to have the pontine nuclei. Why anteriorly to to the medulla you instead have the olivary nucleus? So you instead have the olivary nucleus here. Why in case of the pons you instead have pontine nuclei? So these are the special characteristics you can see. So now this is the mesencephalon. So mesencephalon is the upper part which is used in the formation of the midbrain. So here is going to be the extraventricular and intraventricular cerebral 
um, say Bella plate. So from this from the pawns, you're going to have the say Bella plate. The pawns and the and the, the say bellum are all formed from the meden cephalon. So they so they have connection which exists between them, and that connection will be the cerebral cerebral pedoncle. So you are going to have the cerebral pedoncle which is going to connect the pawns and the um, and the cerebellum. So you see that posteriorly to the pawns you have this. So at this position here you are going to have the sulco limitans. Here you are going to have the basal plate of the pawns. Here you are going to have the ala plate. And separating the basal ala plate you have the sulcus limitans which you can see deeper here. So you can see here at this position the cavity here is going to the cavity of the fourth ventricle so now the more the cerebellum grows you are going to have this structure here here is going to be the anterior and the posterior the superior and inferior colliculus of the midbrain we are not going to be involved with that because we are struggling to find the structure of the cerebellum so now posteriorly here the cerebellum is going to develop laterally to the to, to the to the to the portion of the development of cerebellum we are going to have the cerebellar hemispheres and medially you are going to have the vermis here inferiorly you are going to have inferiorly and medially you are going to have the nodule inferiorly and laterally you are going to have the flocculus so superiorly you have the cerebellar hemisphere medially superiorly and laterally cerebellar hemisphere medially the vermis um, inferiorly and medially you have the nodules inferiorly and laterally you have the flocculus so these are all what we can see here so this is a posterior medullary velum here you have the foramen um, magensi here the foramen magensi <coughs> is the foramen connecting the third ventricle to the um, the the spinal to the spinal canal it's connecting the fourth ventricle instead to the spinal canal the foramen magensi i also have the foramen of Lushka here which is connecting the um, fourth ventricle to the external cerebrospinal fluid space so here is a good day, roof of the fourth ventricle. So you have all this and this is going to show you the growth of the cerebellum. So at start you have this portion here, you are going to have the marginal layer, here is going to be the mantle layer and here is the, the marginal layer is the outermost portion. The new epithelial layer is the innermost portion, the middle layer is the mantle, is the mantle layer. So as you can see here marginal outermost middle uh, mantle and innermost new epithelial layer so you see that the new epithelial layer is the innermost layer at the outermost portion we have the external granular layer so you see here as such <coughs> now you see that the external granular layer which is the marginal layer is going to produce is going to have midi middle to it we have the um, the purkinje cells the purkinje cells are going to be here and the purkinje cells are going to grow into the um, the other part here into the external granular layer they're going to send their fibers into external granular layer forming the gray cortex of the cerebellum so we have the gray cortex is going to be gray and internal is going to be white so we see that um, initially the mantle layer we know that the mantle layer is a portion which is going to be forming the gray matter now the mantle layer contains the purkinje cells and the purkinje cells are the ones which are extending their fibers into the gray into the into the uh, marginal layer as such so this is why internally is going to remain only a white matter so and here you are going to have the different nuclei which are going to be formed here so here are different nuclei which are also aggregations of the um, which are also aggregations of the, um, the the mantle layer so this is the dentin nucleus we have the emboliform nucleus again we have the fascia nucleus so going from going from medial to lateral we are going to have the fat the fascia nucleus emboliform nucleus and the dentin nucleus so this is how we can see at this position we have the external um, granular layer you see that internally there was you see that at this ex the external granular layer was first the marginal layer and normally this is what is going to produce the white matter but we see that the, there is going to be interchange in position and this is what's going to produce the gray matter but it's going to be interchange in position at level of cortex where this one is going to move up and this one is going to move down so this is going to be internal granular layer and this is going to be put behind layer 
so now this is going to be now the development of the midbrain so we have the midbrain as such which is going to enclose the um, the, the the aqueduct of Sylvius. So the, the, the midbrain is going to enclose the aqueduct of Sylvius here. So this neural tube <coughs> enclosing the aqueduct of the Sylvius, you have here the sulcus limitans. Posterior here, you said you know that this is going to be the ala plate, and here is going to be the basal plate. Now, the ala plate is closer to the roof, while the basal plate is closer to the floor. So now this position here is going to mostly produce the motor shocks. They are going to mostly produce the sensory, um, sensory um, um, fibers, and these are going to be the motor fibers. So what is going to happen is that this has stratified nucle um, nuclear colliculus, and these are these colliculus are going to have are going to um, have fibers from the optic nerve. So these are posterior, so from superior and inferior colliculus, they are going to have shocks from the optic nerve. And all these are sensory shocks. All that they are going to enter into your portion. The sensory visceral. We have the the somatic visceral. All that here is going to be um, the the general sensory visceral. Here is going to be the the uh, the special sensory visceral. And here is going to be somatic um, sensory. Here is going to be the visceral efferent. Closer to the sulcus simitans, you have the visceral efferent. Here you have the somatic efferent. We have a special visceral efferent too. So, but closest to the sulcus is going to be the, the, the genera. At this position, you are going to have the red nucleus or the ruba nucleus, and here you are going to have the substantia nigra, which is involved with the um, substantia nigra is involved with the basal ganglia, separated into two portions: the bas compact and the bas reticulata. So now this is the different portion. We have the roof of diencephalon here. We have the cerebellum here. We have the foramen of Monroe connecting the two different lateral ventricles to the third ventricle of diencephalon. So now we are going to now involve now with the growth of the diencephalon. So now with the diencephalon, we need to know that this position, the diencephalon is going to produce the thalamus at this position here it's going to produce the hypothalamus at this position here it's going to produce the epi epithalamus at this position here and also going to produce the um, subthalamus so here is going to be the lamina terminalis so all through this line blue line here you're going to have at this portion the lamina terminalis here you're going to have the corpus the, the optic chasm here you're going to have the infundibulum connecting the hypothalamus and pituitary here you're going to have the mammillary gland here you're going to have the epiphysis <coughs> so now when you cut through this portion here you're going to visualize this diagram so when you visualize this diagram you see that here is the neopallium here is the lateral ventricle here is going to be the hippocampus here so the hippocampus is going to be located here and here is going to be a coral plexus here is the corpus stratum initially it was existing in this format so this is the diagram of b so when you have the cut at this position you see that it's going to be and at this position is going to be c so you have this when you cut again you visualize this other diagram the corpus stratum is located here the thalamus is hypothalamus is here so now this is going to be diagram showing the growth of the pituitary gland the pituitary gland has two portions it has the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary the anterior pituitary gland is not originating from the um, the neuroendothelial cells so anterior pituitary is originating from mesenchymal cells via a, phary a pharyngeal um, hypophysis here so initially you have a pharyngeal uh, a pharyngeal um, cut here at this position pharyngeal growth at this position and the rack porch which is coming from the mes which is having a mesenchymal origin is going to enter and go and fuse with the posterior pituitary portion of the pituitary gland so this posterior pituitary gland is going to have the neuroendothelial origin. This is why it contains neurons and neuronal axons. And this other one is going to have an origin from the anterior pituitary. And the anterior pituitary has an origin from the mesenchyme, which comes from the pharynx. So this is from the oral cavity. You have the rack porch. It is entering and then goes up here with, with a, rem a remnant here, the pharyngeal hypophysis. 
this is a pass nervosa anteriorly the pass uh, pass this is a pass anterior this is a pass tuberalis so this is a pass tuberalis yes this is a pass distalis this is a pass intermediate so now the clinical correlation of the pituitary gland growth are going to the pharyngeal hypophysis. You see that this position here, where it grows, you see that normally this this one here can't at, at times can cannot clo close. So the rat post is going to have some remnants to which are going to enter into the pharynx, and that remnant is going to be called the pharyngeal hypophysis. So that's one clinical correlation. And another clinical correlation is craniopharyngeoma. <clears throat> so this is a visualization of the diagram. At this position, we have the anterior commissure, we have the corpus callosum, we have the habenular commissure, and here we have the posterior commissure. Here we have the optic chasm. Here we have the infundibulum and the uh, mammillary body. So when you visualize all the diagram after this cut, you see that you have the neocortex here. So this is the neopallium at the level of the cortex. So this shows the cortex. You see that the fibers of the cortex are going to pass through the coded nucleus and the lentiform nucleus. So they are going to pass through this five. This um, um the white matter which is enclosing it is going to be called the internal castle. They are passing through the coded nucleus, the lentiform nucleus, and also passing through hypothalamus and um hypo the the hyper the thalamus and the hypothalamus, entering as such here in the internal capsule and then descending. We are the third ventricle and close to the third ventricle here. So now, from here you can visualize now how there is going to be the growth of the olfactory nerve. Initially, the olfactory nerve grows as such. Here you are going to have the nasal pit here, the medial nasal prominence, so the oropharyngeal membrane. So this is the initial origin so after that you have the breakdown of the oral nasal membrane so this is oral nasal membrane here so this is the oral far oral cavity after the breakdown of oral nasal membrane you see that the olfactory bulb is going to be produced from this inferior portion here so we have the nasal chamber we have the primitive cone we have the pre primary palate so we have the olfactory bulb going to produce here the olfactory bulb here and the other bones are going to produce the cone the maxilla and the secondary part are going to be produced. So this um, primary plate here is going to produce the, the ma maxillary cleft. It's going to produce the maxillary cleft, which is going to fuse. So you have the upper lip, you have the lower lip, you have the mandible, you have the definitive cone, you have the secondary palate here. So all of this, the structure involved in the formation of the olfactory nerve ball. <coughs> So now this is how the uh, corpus callosum is going to futurely expand because the corpus callosum is located here. Here's the anterior commissure. Here you are going to have the posterior commissure. Here you are going to have the habenula. Here you have the diencephalic roof and the choroid plexus. Here you have the um, optic chasm. Here the mammillary body. Here the cerebellum. So these are the main structures involved with the um, diencephalon with the corpus um, callosum expanding in that direction. So here are the different boxes which are involved with the different um, formation and the direction of the pharyngeal arches. You have R1, 2, 2, 8. So this red box here, the Hox, the Hox B1 here, is going to be involved now with the proliferation of the of this um, cranial nerve 4. So it's going, it's going to be involved in the proliferation of this zone 4 here. So this Hox here. Hox B1. Now, this um, other one, Hox A1, is going to be involved in the provision of tissues from um, from 2 to, to the region 8. So, the provision of tissue from, from region 2 to region 8 are involved with Hox box A2. So, the, the provision of tissue from this region, region 3 to region 8, is going to be involved with Hox, Hox B2. And all the wrecks are going to be involved as such. So you have Hox A3, B3, D3, and all that one involved in the proliferation of these different tissues in the high brain region. So all of these are going to show the patterns of the um, the, the 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 sensation of, of patterns of innervation of the cranial nerves involved in the pharyngeal um, pharyngeal pouches. So from here we have seen the main 
um, thing involved and the cranial defect that can occur from all from more mainly the laterality pathway can be the holoprosencephaly so where you cannot distinguish the body cannot distinguish the upper portion from the lower portion of the body and the laterality is reversed is not is not taking consideration so you have the holoprosencephaly where which refer as a spectrum of anonymity of loss of limit line structure we see that from here there is no laterality which has been performed so there's loss of midline structure resulting in malformation of the brain and face in severe cases lateral ventricle merge so this is these are the lateral ventricles merge into single telencephalic ventricles. So this is the main problem which occurs, and this is due to the problem of the molecular pathway and the genes. So we also have this other problem. We've initially seen the meningoencephalo cell, the meningo cell. Now at the level of the head, you can have meningo cell, and you can also have meningoencephalo cell. In, in the other case with the the, the posterior with the posterior um, cranial cranial pole not close not closing with the posterior neuropole not closing we see that we had a spinal bifida which had different forms but in this case where the uh, anterior um, neuropole is not closing you can have an anencephaly or you can have these other forms of um, cranial bifida, the cranial bifida so these these forms are the meningo cells the meningoencephalocell and you have the meningohydroencephalocell so this is a child with um, macromycocephaly so all these are the main tissue which are involved and this is the direction involved with the um, supply of the different cranial pouches so olfactory nerve telencephalo nasal epithelium so this is the brain origin of olfactory nerve the optic nerve the brain origin is diencephalon and the innervation is switching now olfactory nerve brain origin still encephalon uh, is going to innervate the nasal epithelium optic nerve the brain origin is diencephalon is going to innervate the retina oculomotor nerve the brain origin is mesencephalon is going to um, innervate the superior inferior um, media rectus and inferior bigger all the muscles as you can see from anatomy but the main one which are going to be involved here are going to be these two Trochlear nerve origin is metencephalon. Trigeminal nerve origin is um, metencephalon. <coughs> so, abducent nerve origin is going to be the metencephalon. Fascia nerve the origin is going to be metencephalon. But the specifically, is trigeminal is going to innervate the, the first pharyngeal pouch. The fascia is going to innervate the second pharyngeal pouch. The vestibulocochlear nerve is going to be origin for metencephalon. Glossopharyngeal nerve is going to origin from myencephalon, and it's very important to know that it's going to have innervation to the third pharyngeal pouch. And we also have the vagus nerve from myencephalon, innervating the fourth to sixth pharyngeal pouch. So these are the main things to note. So from here we have seen specifically the main things involved with the um, power with the central nervous system and we also need to know that the chromaffin cells are coming from the neural crest cells. So from here we can see the main things that was involved in the parasympathesis in the central nervous system embryology and we can say thanks for your kind attention please don't forget to like and subscribe for science Geomakers. Thank you.